all right so we've come to it at last uh, we have covered all the basics of writing a restful api in golang using echo framework so this is the time when we would like to summarize all that we learned as part of this course all right so we started with net http package so golang has this uh, package as part of its standard library and using this package you can pretty much uh, and some other packages you can pretty much write any kind of complex rest api that you want but we also realized that writing some very simple things would actually become very lengthy and unmanageable at some point and that is why frameworks such as echo gorilla gin they come handy okay and that's when we started uh, exploring the echo framework so echo framework introduction uh, in that we talked about how we can make use of echo framework to write an api we talked about reading query parameters path parameters cookies headers and uh, some simple things such as uh, the ascending errors sending response back different ways of sending the response back right the next thing we talked about was we implemented our dummy endpoints with get put delete and post methods that was working with our in memory a structure and not with an actual database and we learned how uh, the different endpoints can work how we can parse data using methods such as bind and uh, how we can work in echo's way of you know implementing these endpoints we also uh, you know saw some examples of middleware we wrote some of our custom middleware as well okay then we started exploring mongodb driver in golang before jumping on to integrating it integrating our app with mongodb uh, we talked about the different operators that you can use in mongodb in golang such as update operators query operators create operators and how you can write those operators using different formats of bson okay how we can connect to database how we can write or create an index so we talked about all those things we so many methods that are available as part of this driver to delete insert update documents okay next we implemented the endpoints get post put delete using an actual instance of mongodb and uh, we had our interface uh, we had our uh, we had all these methods and each of these methods had there some peculiarities for example the put method also was able to perform as a batch method as well we had to make sure that there were some uh, limitations in echo framework for example in the put method we were not able to get uh, the parsing to work properly the json parsing available in echo so we had to resort to using the json package to do that parsing so we learned all those things right then we talked about the testing basics so we we learned how you can implement any third party library in go that makes network calls and how you can write unit test by mocking those kind of network calls so that was an important lesson and we also uh, learned when we should not be mocking our uh, methods that are available in third party so when you draw where you draw the line when you should be doing the unit test or integration test we also encountered some issues with our uh, integration test where uh, http test utilities such as http test had to be used in a certain way if they are to be used within the realm of frameworks such as echo because they work differently okay so we, we learned about testing and then we also explored error handling different ways of sending the errors back to the user logging such as access logs and error logs at different debugging levels in the logging and uh, we also talked about some cross-cutting concerns and we did that using middleware such as uh, 
limiting the body uh, request body size or uh, removing the trailing flashes okay and uh, then we talked about JWT authentication and authorization we used the off-the-shelf middleware available in Echo to implement the JWT authentication. We used to generate our own token and then we used we wrote our custom middleware to authorize the user to do a particular operation on a particular endpoint. Okay. And then in the end we wrote a Docker file to dockerize our application and we did that using a multi-stage Docker file. And we learned some basics around Docker and Docker Compose there as well we, we also wrote a docker compose file so that we have our application in a container talking to mongodb in a different container okay and uh, we published our code i i shared the link of my github repo so that was all that we covered so far and i hope you like the course if you have any other suggestions if you want any other things to be added to the course please let me know and when i get the time i'll be happy to address those issues as well okay and I I have tried to uh, create this course with the things that I know of course there have there might have been some mistakes and I'm just human so I think if you found find something uh, let me know I'll try to correct it and uh, be humble about it and be respectful that's it thank you